welcome back to Cooking Live. Today we are going to make a creamed cauliflower and spinach gratin that will be perfect for you to bring to your next holiday potluck, whether that's with family, friends, coworkers, or um, anywhere else you may need to have a new vegetable dish to kind of lighten up the offerings at that particular holiday festivity. We're going to start by heating up our pan to medium-high heat. And we're going to add a little bit of olive oil just to coat the bottom of the pan. Okay. Once this gets hot and shimmery, I am going to add three quarters of a cup of panko breadcrumbs. I really like to use the panko kind of breadcrumbs because they're light and crispy. And that's what really we want on top of a gratin like this. We'll have our creamy, heavier vegetable base and um, this will just add a nice, light, crunchy topping uh, for some contrast. My oil is shimmery, so I'm gonna put that in here. Don't get rid of this bowl, we're gonna use it here. All right, just gonna basically toast these breadcrumbs in my olive oil here. All right, so while those are toasty, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper, just a touch. And I want this topping to be a really nice, flavorful foil to the um, to the creamier base here. So a little bit of pepper, a little bit of thyme. You could use any combination of green herbs that you like. Thyme works well, marjoram works well, so does oregano. But I'm just gonna keep it traditional with just just the time here, and a light sprinkling of salt, ever so light, like I said. We just want this to be nice and flavorful. Okay, breadcrumbs are starting to toast here, mm, and I'm getting a good herby smell. You could use fresh herbs in this recipe, um, certainly you could, but I, um, Often find they go to waste, and so I uh, I use I'm using dried in my recipe today. But if you want it fresh, by all means, go for it. Okay, these are golden brown and delicious looking. So I am going to turn off my heat here, so I do not burn myself, and then return my um, breadcrumbs to my bowl here. Okay. These just go off to the side. Okay. There you have it. Important step, move them off to the side to cool. Important step here, I want to, excuse me, Actually wipe out my bowl, my pan. Oops. Let's do that off camera. I'm gonna wipe out my pan before I add my next ingredients because I don't want any leftover breadcrumbs in there to burn and scorch and make the rest of my recipe not turn out well. All right, this time we're turning the heat back on to medium, so a little bit lower than it was before. Gonna add in some olive oil there. Again, just heat until it's nice and shimmery. Pan's already hot, so it'll happen pretty quickly there. Got uh, half of an onion here, sliced very thin. Okay, you can see that. Heard a little bit of a sizzle there. And I can go ahead and move that pan off the, that uh, bowl off the side. A little bit of a simmer, so I'm going to maybe turn my heat down a little bit more. I don't want my onions to brown. I want them to just get nice and soft and translucent before I add in my cauliflower. Okay? They should just be barely starting to brown around the edges by the time I add in my next vegetable. So we're just going to 
let those sit and cool. And those seem to be cooking pretty fast, so I'm actually going to turn my heat down even a little bit more. So I'm at more of a medium, medium low right now. These onions will take a bit of time to cook. Think like five to seven minutes. Um, so I will join you back whenever they're done. All right. Okay, so my onions have been cooking for about five minutes. I'm gonna bring the pan over here so you can see. They are translucent and soft and just starting to get brown around the edges there. The point is not um, the point is not to have um, too much caramelization in the actual body of the dish because we really want those vegetable flavors um, to shine through. I just added a head of cauliflower that I have chopped up um, pretty coarsely. You can see my pieces here; they're not too big, they're smaller, smaller than bite size, and they're not in florets. My family does not love cauliflower, which breaks my heart because I love cauliflower. I enjoy eating cauliflower. I think it's amazing. You can make it into all kinds of things, um, but they're just really not cauliflower fans. And so I've asked them why, and it's always, well, I don't like the texture, I don't like the smell, and it's always very bland. And so this dish right here is a perfect way to kind of make cauliflower in a way that addresses those three very common um, issues that people have with cauliflower. Because the pieces are small, we're not going to end up with a big hunk of cauliflower in, in your mouth. And so that's really important for a lot of people. Most people who say they don't like vegetables, what they are really saying is, I don't like the textures of vegetables that I have been exposed to so far. Um, so we cut these pieces small. They're going to cook in our onion and olive oil, both very gentle type flavors, um, for like 10 minutes or so until it gets nice and soft but not squishy. I like using fresh cauliflower for this for that reason instead of using the frozen. Frozen would be a little bit cheaper, but we're going to end up with something soggy at the end, and that's really not the point. Okay? Don't need to keep messing with it. Um, an occasional stir will be just fine. But this will take, it'll cook in the in the olive oil that's still in the bottom pan there for about seven or so minutes. Um, again, my heat is just shy of medium here. I don't want my cauliflower to brown. I want to have a nice white um, finished product when I'm done. It should be cooked, but it shouldn't be really very caramelized. So we're going to cook it low and slow for about seven minutes, and I will catch back up with you whenever that's done. Okay. So my cauliflower has been cooking for about nine minutes. I ended up putting, um, my pan was getting a little dry, so I ended up putting a little bit more oil into my pan um, because my pan was getting dry and my cauliflower was starting to brown. So as much as I've been talking about, don't let your cauliflower brown, I have some brown spots in here. But it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It just won't be as, as crisp white as I wanted it to be. My cauliflower pieces are al dente. And turn that heat down a little bit, which means they are not mushy, but they they have a little um, they have a little bit of texture left there. Okay, so I am going to add another sprinkle of salt. I just tasted one, and so I know that I have plenty of space. That's like a half teaspoon or so, and a pinch there. Okay, I'm going to turn this heat down even farther. In fact, I might turn that off while I talk to you. Okay, try again. Much better. Got some flavor there. This is not stinky. We did not steam these cauliflower pieces, and so a lot of those sulfur compounds have been allowed to work their way out over the last 10 minutes or so while this has been cooking. Okay, so what I'm going to add next is one clove of garlic, all nice and minced. Turn that heat back on to low. Yep, to low. Just going to let that garlic cook 
20 seconds, 30 seconds. I just want it to be fragrant, fragrant and not super raw. And I'm going to add in one cup of half and half. All right. A lot of creamed cauliflower recipes will um, call for heavy cream, which is delicious, but also quite high in calories and saturated fats. And so um, we're lightening this up for our uh, for our fellow friends. And so we are going to um, use half and half. Half and half is actually half cream, half skim milk. So it has half the saturated fat and half the total fat of heavy whipping cream. You can use half and half in just about any recipe that calls for cream, uh, things like soups, stews, hot dishes like this. Um, it is not going to whip up like whipped cream for a topping pie, for example, though. Um, but you can use it for just about anything. This is starting to simmer around the edges. I want my liquid to reduce by half and start to thicken. Okay. Ooh, my pan handle's getting a little toasty. Let's just... Alright, so that should take a few minutes. Maybe like four or five. Okay. Once that thickens up, I'm going to add my Parmesan cheese and spinach. And I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. So my half and half has been reducing for about three or four minutes. It's starting to get very bubbly and slightly thickened. And so what I'm going to add next is my frozen spinach. Okay. I, um, I like frozen spinach best because it's got the um, smallest pieces. Turn this down slightly. One box of frozen spinach is about a pound. I only need half of that. It's about this much. I've had it thawing and draining in this bowl. You can see how much water is there. There's still quite a lot of fluid in here. And so I'm going to take about half this, take about half this clump here, save the other half for something delicious like uh, meatloaf muffins or something like that. And we're just going to keep squeezing. I find that the best tool to use for this is my hands. Okay, you really want to get out as much liquid as you possibly can from this, otherwise the whole thing will turn pale green. And we've worked so hard to keep it a nice bright white. This is just to add a little bit of extra nutrition, a little extra texture, and then just a nice flex of, of green. Okay, so you can see my eight ounces of spinach is now just slightly bigger than a, a handful here. Okay, ooh, want this to be turned down. Low and slow is the name of the game. This recipe does take a bit of time, and it'll be about 40 minutes start to finish, but most of that is just waiting for things to cook, and it's really important to do it stepwise so that we get to layer all these flavors, okay? I'm going to sprinkle in my spinach. I want to make sure I'm breaking up the big chunks. I don't want anybody to get a, a big bite of just spinach. I want it to be nice and well incorporated there. Okay. Eight ounces frozen spinach, well drained and squeezed, added into the mix here. Oh, that's beautiful. Looks very Christmassy. Holiday. Oops, I got some big chunks here. I'm gonna wanna spread that guy out. Okay. Just make that so it's heated through. It won't take very long. This has been thawing at room temperature. So that's that. Next optional little flavoring aid, I'm going to take a fresh nutmeg in my microplane, give it a little zest there, about a quarter teaspoon or so. Certainly not mandatory if you don't have fresh nutmeg, but it does elevate that cream sauce just a touch. Mmm, smells good too. Alright, let's turn this heat all the way off. Stir it in, add a half a cup of fine, sh finely shredded Parmesan cheese. That'll add our last little bit of saltiness and a little bit of creaminess. 
Heat is off. I'm just going to let the residual heat melt that in there. Okay. This is not particularly saucy. Okay. You can see here, it's mostly vegetable. The, the half and half and the Parmesan cheese are really just there to kind of hold the little pieces of cauliflower together. You can see that? A few little extra pieces of spinach there. I'm going to taste my, taste this one last time. Mm, it smells good. There's a little bit of garlic, touch, just a little hint of nutmeg. Hmm. That'll do it. That's good. That's good. If you wanted to adjust with some salt here, you certainly could. Um, this does not need any more. So I'm going to take my pan. It's already cooked, so I don't need to spray it or anything. I'm just going to put my cauliflower in a little 8 by 8 pan here. And then if I was serving this immediately, I would put my breadcrumbs on it, um, just top that and uh, serve it to the table. If this is traveling, which this is traveling with me to um, an event I'm doing tonight, um, I'm going to leave the breadcrumbs off. I'm just going to put the lid on that pan. Um, and when I get to my location, I will heat this up in the microwave and then add the breadcrumbs just before serving. That way they stay nice and crisp and have a nice um, texture difference for the creamy cauliflower insides. Please give this recipe a try. Let me know what you think. It is quickly becoming one of my new favorite holiday side dishes to bring places. It travels really well and it turns people who formerly did not like cauliflower into believers. All right. As always, let us know what you think in the comments below this video. You can follow us on all our social media channels, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.